What are the top five things you should do before you turn 50? If you want to hear the top five things that I think you should do before you turn 50, then just keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, My Extraordinary Ordinary. My name is Danielle and I'm so excited that you're here with me today to share a milestone with me. I am turning 50 years old. Now historically, one of the most popular and viewed videos on my channel ever since I filmed it about three years ago is the video entitled 10 Things You Should Do Before You Turn 40. So I thought it would be fun to film a quick video now that I'm turning a whole decade older and talk about the top five things that I think you should do before you turn 50. So without further ado, let's get started. Coming in at number five, return to an old love. Now, if you're married or in a romantic relationship, I'm not telling you to look for an old flame or look for an old romantic partner. What I'm talking about is rekindling your excitement or your passion for an old hobby or something that you used to do that you really enjoyed or really loved. As we live our lives, we go through many different seasons in our life and sometimes the things that we love and enjoy are things that we end up putting on the back burner or giving up entirely based on the season of life that we're in. But if you're 50 years old or older and you find yourself sometimes thinking about some of those things that you used to do when you were younger that you used to really enjoy and love that you no longer do then my suggestion to you is revisit it one thing for me that comes to mind is reading I used to love to sit down and lose myself for hours in a good novel and I haven't done that in a really long time and in large part it's because I haven't made the time to do that but that is something that I really want to return to because it's something that I really enjoyed it was completely free it was something that really relaxed me and that was just really enjoyable for me so that's something for me that I'm looking forward to doing again and you never know maybe you will return to an old hobby or something that you used to love and maybe you'll find out that you don't really love it anymore and that's fine too but it might be exciting and fun to revisit an old hobby or something that you used to really love and it might be a way to invigorate your life with a little bit more excitement. Moving on, number four is use your talents and skills to help someone in need. We've honed our skills, we know what our talents are. Now this doesn't have to be something that you do at your job or something that you do in your line of work, but maybe you have a talent or skill that would really benefit someone else. And this is something that everyone can do. Maybe you sew or maybe you bake. If you can send encouraging texts, if you can write someone a letter, those things are so important. How many times do we all have a really bad day, but we get an encouraging text, maybe we get a note in the mail, it really can brighten your day. And this is also really great because maybe your life is going great right now. Maybe you're really happy with everything going on in your life, but maybe you're not. Maybe there are some things in your life that you're not happy with. Maybe you wish you were at a different point in your life, but I can tell you that when we use our talents and skills to benefit someone else, when we kind of take the eyes off ourselves and off of the things that we wish were different in our life or maybe off some of our problems, it really helps us become more positive. And the person that we're helping is gonna be so great grateful and so thankful and it's going to bring you so much joy to help someone else that really has a need for your talent or your skill. Number three, focus on improving your mental health specifically by letting go of negative emotions. So much time can go by without us even realizing that we are harboring negative emotions. Sometimes weeks, months, years, or even decades can go by where we can be harboring feelings like anger, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, envy, and it's time to let those negative emotions go. Not really for the other circumstance, situation, or person, but really for yourself because those negative emotions really damage you emotionally, mentally, and they can really harm your physical body. And I can tell you from personal experience that harboring negative emotions towards a person or a situation or a thing can really rob you of all the joy that your life has to offer. And I know that this is a lot easier said than done. Counseling is a great way to help yourself work through the process of letting those negative emotions go. If you're really struggling with this or finding it hard to do on your own, I think that having a third party just to talk to and just to work through some of these things is really, really valuable. 
because at our core as people we have two innate needs that are really important to us and that is to be heard and to be understood. So whether you pursue something like pastoral counseling at your church or counseling with a licensed therapist, I find that that is something that can really help you to release and let go of negative emotions that may be holding you back or harming you emotionally, mentally, and possibly even physically. Working to let go of any negative emotions that you're harboring will really help you show up in your loved one's lives as the best version of yourself and that's why this is so important. Moving on to number two, working to heal or repair broken relationships. Now I realize that there's some relationships in your life that may have been severed for a reason and are not meant to be healed and repaired and those are not the relationships I'm referring to here. I'm talking about the relationships you really wish could be healed and repaired and a lot of times the first step in doing that is really looking at forgiving. And I know that this is easier said than done. My go-to with this is always prayer. And again, this is another instance where counseling can be really beneficial and really instrumental in helping you do this. We don't want to look back and have regrets and wish that we would have healed or repaired a relationship when we had the time to do it. Now, if you're in a good place in your life and you don't really have any relationships that need to be healed or repaired, seek to improve a relationship that you really care about. And what I think about when I think about this is my relationship with my siblings. And there's nothing wrong between us. There's no ill will between us. It's just that we are so busy. We all have our own families and our own lives. And what really made me think about this is the fact that I'm having a big 50th birthday party in a couple weeks. And when I was planning out my invitation, and inviting people and I was inviting my siblings I realized it had been a long time since I had seen them or even talked to them and I want to do a better job at growing those relationships more and being a little bit more involved in their lives and having more of a relationship with my siblings so that's something over the next coming year that I'm going to try and focus on because it's important to me they're my family so either work to heal or repair a broken relationship or really mindfully focus on improving a relationship that's important to you because this will really bring you so much peace and so much happiness and even if it doesn't turn out the way you're hoping knowing that you did everything you could to bring about restoration, to bring about healing, to bring about a closer relationship will make you feel so much better. Now, the number one thing on my list, and for many of you this will come as no surprise, and that is to prioritize your physical well-being and your physical health. The older we get, the harder it will become to make our physical health and our physical well-being a priority. And I've said this before, it's so true. We only have one body. It's not like you have a spare body waiting for you in your closet when you wear the one you're in out that you can just put on and you can be all good as new. The older you get, the more challenging it can be to really take control of your physical health. And that's not to say it can't be done because it can. It's never too late to really make your physical health a priority. One of the saddest things I see in my profession as a personal trainer is retired people coming in and now they have all the time to do all the things that they didn't have time to do when they were working, when they were raising their families, when they were more busy, but they don't have the physical health to enjoy the things that they really want to do. Whether it's playing with your grandchildren, whether it's golfing or taking up some sports as a hobby, whether it's traveling, whatever it might be, think about what you want your retirement years to look like and think about the things that you'd like to do and now think about whether you have the physical capacity or capability to do those things and if you don't it's time to set some goals to make sure that when you get there you are able to really enjoy all the years that you have to the best of your ability. This really helps you have better mental health. It helps you to feel more confident emotionally. It helps you feel happier. And I will say this, as a Christian, I really believe that when we take the best possible care of our physical bodies that we can, we are being good stewards of the bodies that God gave us. And that is so, so important. If you struggle with this or you're not sure where to start or it feels daunting or overwhelming, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you. Drop a comment below or you can DM me on any of my social media platforms. You'll see my social media handles on the screen right now and you can also find them in the description box below this video. And if you've already made your physical health a priority, then I would challenge you to reach out to someone that you know and help them on their journey to make their physical health a priority too. Well, you guys,
guys, there you have it. Those are my top five things that I think you should do before you turn 50. What are the top five things that you would say that you should do before you turn 50? Let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing your thoughts and opinions as well. If you want to hear my top 10 things that you should do before you turn 40, then you want to watch the video that's going to pop on your screen next. But with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed spending some time with you today as I celebrate my 50th birthday. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. And remember to make your everyday ordinary life extraordinary.